subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon the ministry of environment forest and climate change has brought a notification for the brick kilns before taking you to the notification i would like to take you through some interesting and relevant facts figures and information this is a final report of evaluation evaluating energy conservation potential of brick production in india and it was prepared for shark energy center in 2013 shark is south asian association for regional cooperation now let us straight go to page number 4 here you can see the introduction in fact uh, if you can read out uh, let me read it out for you clay fired bricks if i can just a second let me increase the size yeah it is better readable i think clay fired bricks are preferred walling material in india india has a long and rich history of production and use of clay fired bricks dating back to the indus valley civilization and you know the whole lot of description here sarnath nalanda kutub minar and so many other things now what i wanted to share you here is india is the largest producer of bricks in the world producing around 240 billion bricks annually now this is 2013 2013 data now let's go to 2017 data here you can see 2017 data now here if you see it is the number of brick kilns 1 for 140000 to 2 lakh 10000 brick kilns in india but the annual brick production in 2017 remained somewhere close to 260 billion bricks and in 2030 13 it was 240 it employs a huge number of persons 10 million people it talks about it contributes to india's gdp by 2% coal consumption for firing bricks per annum 29 to 35 million tons in fact this sector it is the third largest consumer of coal after power and steel and apart from coal it also consumes a number of a huge quantity of biomass fuels now obviously the large coal consumption of the brick industry is the cause of significant air pollution in terms of carbon dioxide carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen and most importantly the dust particulates the particulate matters you can also say the ultra fine particulates the large amounts of coal used for brick firing also leave behind bottom ash as residue the air pollution and bottom ash generated cause considerable health problems especially related to the respiratory health issue now let me bring you again to the same slide you see here annual carbon dioxide emission in 2017 60 to 65 million tons and what is the clay consumption 700 to 750 million tons now you think how much is the excavation and how does it impact the soil as well as air environment now some more facts and figures let me take you to another page of this website here you see this talks about development programs initiatives in the indian brick industry please take a note of zigzag firing technology and you can see it is 1970s so in 1970s or maybe during 1970s central building research institute had introduced 
the zigzag firing technology and semi mechanization process and you see the impact it was successful in seeding the technologies adoption of technology only in certain states like west bengal then in 1990s you can see the cpc we central pollution control board and the ministry of environment and forest at that point of time they it brought regulations on air emission for the brick kilns and you can see here large scale shift around 30000 kilns from moving chimney bulls trench kiln technology to efficient more efficient and less polluting bulls trench kiln technology so this is one and you can see the vertical shaft brick kiln was introduced during 1995 to 2004 by swiss agency for uh, for the development and for development and cooperation then let me take you to another slide or another page which talks about you see here you can find out how Now in 1996 the emission standards for brick kilns was introduced by the Ministry of Environment and Forest in fact as i have already told you that it was ministry of environment and forest till 2014 after the modi government came into power it became the ministry of environment forest and climate change so here you see the existing moving bull trench kilns shall be dispensed by Uh, dispensed with by 31st December 1997, and no new moving chimney kilns shall be allowed to come up. Moving chimney, okay. Then, considering the immediate, you see here there is a point. All brick kilns manufacturing unit within radius of 50 kilometers from the thermal power plant shall use fly ash in optimal. proportion for making bricks now there is a standard suspended particulate matter is talk about it is actually particulate matter particulate matter because it is not sus in suspended form it is called particulate matter so for small kilns it is 1000 it was 1000 medium kilns it was 750 and last kil also it was 750 so this is now obsolete this has become this is history actually this was uh, this is just to give an idea that in 1996 the regulation came and then whatever the changes were uh, uh, took place those were all primarily influenced by this fly ash notification here you see this is a sketch of fixed chimney btk btk is in fixed chimney bulls trench kiln this was at that point of time it was little comparatively it was less polluting and energy efficient and let us go to see this one yeah you see how the coal is was fed here coal these are all coal layers you can see layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 so coal feed it is fed and uh, there are different layers of bricks so like this it is there then let's go to this is the zigzag technology original design of high drought zigzag kiln technology have a glance at this how the fuel is passed 
past and underground tunnels, the tunnels are there, valves and so likewise. Then you can, uh, let's go to uh, the next, uh, this is, this is what it looks like. This is Chick Jack and this is the other one, the Bull's Trench Kill. This is what is the Chick Jack one, this whole, whole thing is the Chick Jack one. Now let me show you the vertical shaft. This is the vertical shaft one. Vertical shaft, the basic arrangement. The flue gas is going up. This is the vertical shaft. And uh, finally, one more thing I would like to show you, and that is uh, here you can see zigzag kilns appear to be logical replacement of the fixed chimney bull's trench kilns because of low capital investment. At that point of time also it was told that it was low capital investment, easy integration with the existing production process and possibility of retrofitting FCBTKs into zigzag firing. Then the vertical shaft, these brick kilns appear to be to have a limited market mainly because of its inability to produce good quality bricks from all types of clays, from all types of clays and its low productivity under the Indian conditions. So VSBK dissemination needs to be properly targeted. So this was in 2013. Now we will come to our latest notification. So the latest notification, in fact, it is GSR, GSR as in General Statutory Rules, GSR 143E, dated 22nd February 2022. And what it talks, all new brick kilns shall be allowed only with zigzag technology or vertical shaft or use of piped natural gas PNG as fuel in brick making. The existing brick kilns which are not following zigzag technology or vertical shaft or PNG as a fuel in brick making, they need to convert into either zigzag technology or vertical shaft or they have to adopt PNG as fuel in brick making within a period of one year if they are located in or within 10 kilometer radius of non-attainment cities. Non-attainment cities are basically the, uh, I mean these are notified by the Central Pollution Control Board and these are as per the NCAP and you know, uh, if it is no, it is out of the non-attainment or non-attaining cities, then they will get two years for the sifting. Another point is that in case, another point is in the cases where Central Pollution Control Board or the State Pollution Control Boards or the Union Territory Pollution Control Committees, if they have separately laid down any timeline for such conversion, then that order or that timeline will prevail. Then the no notification specifies about the fuels. You know, the use of pet coke is a no. Tires, no. Plastic, no. Hazardous wastes, you know, sometimes uh, some kind of hazardous wastes. Let me quote, for example, uh, cotton rags, oil soaked cotton rags. Sometimes the waste oil. Or maybe, you know, sometimes I've seen that some sludge kind of things, you know, the paint sludge maybe, which is having a high calorific value, that is also used for, you know, burning in the kilns. So, those are no more allowed. So, use of pet cook is not allowed, tires not allowed, plastics not allowed, and hazardous wastes also not allowed. So, what is allowed? Piped natural gas, PNG, that is allowed. In some parts, coal is allowed, fire root, then agricultural residues. But it has to be ensured that whether in places like, let's say, 
uh, the Delhi NCR area whether such type of fuels are allowed that has to be checked by the uh, you know manufacturer. Then the emission limit for particulate matters in the stack emission is given as 250 milligram per nm cube and the result of particulate matters must be normalized to 4% of CO2. What does that mean? If carbon dioxide is less than 4% CO2 in the gas, in the emitting gas, in the gas emission or in the stack emission, then it has to be normalized to 4% CO2. For example, let's say uh, the result comes 100 milligram per nm cube, uh, let's say 200 milligram per nm cube and uh, the carbon dioxide concentration was 2%. So at 2%, if it is 200 milligram per nm cube, when it is normalized to 4%, it is simply 400 milligram per nm cube. In that case, the sample fails. The normalization is not required in case of carbon dioxide in if it is above, equal to or above 4%. But there is another important aspect that is coming when we are talking about stack height. So it talks about the sulfur dioxide. So that will come in the next slide. So we have to measure three things particularly. One is sulfur dioxide, two will be carbon dioxide and third will be the particulate matter. Particulate matter is the primary one which is having a standard and or limit you can say and carbon dioxide is related to particulate matter so it has to be measured and sulfur dioxide is measured only when it is necessary to ensure that the stack height is proper. Then the brick kilns shall have to follow process emission, fugitive dust emission control guidelines as prescribed by the state pollution control boards or the pollution control committees concerned. Now the emission, the process emission, in fact there is a lot of dust, you know the loose earth is stored somewhere around the uh, uh, manufacturing site then there is a lot of fly ash so all those aspects generate a whole lot of uh, particulate matter uh, suspended particulate matters maybe pm10 pm2.5 and also at some point of time there is possibility when there is a burning and there are gaps in between so there is emission of gas also so that also causes process emission and fugitive emission but here it talks about fugitive dust emission control so that has to be the guideline has to be provided by the state pollution control board and the pollution control. now the stack height so when we're talking about stack height it has taken two types of kilns one is vertical soft brick kilns and other than the vertical soft brick kilns so the VSBK, in case of VSBK also they have categorized into two. One is having less than 30,000 bricks per day capacity. One is greater than or equal to 30,000 bricks per day capacity. Now in case of the vertical soft brick, brick kilns having less than 30,000 uh, bricks per day manufacturing, the stack height has to be 14 meters minimum and at least 7.5 meters from the loading platform while if it is more than or equal to equal to or more than 30,000 bricks per day then it has to be raised up to 16 meters at least 8.5 meter from the loading platform and in case of other than vertical shaft brick kilns VSBKs if the bricks per day is less than 30,000 then the stack height will be 24 meters minimum. If it is above or equal to 30,000 bricks per day, then it will be raised to 27 meters. But there is another subject here. Please look at this. This talks about the sulfur dioxide emission rate. If the sulfur dioxide emission rate, on the basis of the sulfur dioxide emission rate, the stack height has to be calculated. And how will it be calculated? The sulfur dioxide emission rate in kg per hour has to be raised to the power 0 0.3. Whatever the outcome, it, it has to be multiplied with 14, 14. 
and whatever the figure comes the that will be the height to be ensured the maximum of these two shall be applicable to the stack height then the brick kilns have to provide permanent facility for monitoring of emissions permanent facility for monitoring of emission means there is a porthole given there is a platform so that the equipment are placed there at least two people stand there and the whole equipment monitoring equipment are placed so that it can i mean that much of weight it can carry so that platform has to be provided there should be a porthole as per norms of the cpcb so i am sharing a photograph of this so this photograph will help you to understand then comes the siting criteria now brick kilns should be established at a minimum distance of 0.8 km from the habitation and fruit orchards fruit orchards if there is a fruit orchard that should be at least i mean the brick kiln should be established at a distance of minimum 0.8 km from the fruit orchards or from a place of habitation the state pollution control board and the state or uh, uh, and the union T uh, territory pollution control committees may make siting criteria stringent considering proximity to habitation pollution density water bodies sensitive receptors etc brick kilns should be established at a minimum distance of 1 km from an existing brick kiln to avoid clustering of kilns in an area so this is very important another important aspect is 100% as utilization as generated in the brick kilns shall be fully utilized in house in brick making then another aspect is transportation brick kiln owners need to ensure that the road utilized for transporting raw materials or the finished crudes that is the brick are paved roads so the roads should be paved roads there should be less dust emission due to the movement of vehicles secondly the vehicles shall be covered during transportation of raw materials as well as the finished goods that is the bricks and it is an important that all necessary approvals from the concerned authorities including the mining department of the state or union territory concerned shall be obtained for extracting the soil that's the used uh, that's used for brick making in the brick kiln so this is all about uh, the notification this is a very clear cut notification uh, issued by the ministry of environment forest and climate change in fact to help you understand what are the technologies involved in zigzag and other aspects i am sharing some more links in fact two i found some uh, interesting youtube links and one of course a link to the uh, national green tribunal i mean it is a very descriptive one so you can uh, read that and you can understand more about different points and aspects of this notification